Hi everybody and welcome back to the channel. Today we are playing a game called Pumpkin Eater. Oh, nobody knew how it happened. <laughs> a boy, barely reaching double digits in years, was lying dead in the driveway. Grey and red pulp was painted everywhere. Get back in the car! Get back! The oh fuck, that's wrong. <laughs> back the car up! Back the car up already! How did he get under there? Laying down to draw some freak force of nature. I'm trying, woman! <laughs> An innocent life was taking too soon and too violently. Was it the will of some cruel god? A woman ran to the body, attempting to reattach fragments of jaw back onto the skull. One figure jumped out of the car in pursuit while the other was frozen in place. Outside, she had watched the full event unfold in front of her. Baby, speak to me, please. He's dead. No, no he's not. Look, he's still moving. Don't you hear him crying? You've gone mad. <laughs> and you've gone deaf, you son of a bitch. We need to save our son. There's still hope left. Drive him to the hospital right now. His brains are all over the pavement. Look, he's already left this world. No, 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 he hasn't. You're a liar. Help me. But, but, I can't be arsed. <laughs> now, if you care about me and your children. He can't stay out here like this. Bring him inside before the neighbors come. We'll deal with this later. It's okay. It's okay. You can hug me tighter, darling. We didn't mean it. He's still alive. Oh my god, I think the mum's going to be this, like, nutcase. I can't wait. Mommy, what's going on? Oh, don't, don't worry. There was just a little accident. But uh, everything is going to be okay, I promise. Uh, we should replace his head. Um, quick, our garden. A pumpkin should be the best size. <laughs> uh. The perfect nuclear family torn apart, their lives would forever be changed because their son became a pumpkin. Oh, Peter, Peter, a pumpkin eater, had a wife but couldn't keep her. He put her in a pumpkin shell and there he kept her very well. Oh, oh I like the drawing. <laughs> it's so cute. The mother stood panting and admiring her creation, whipping off any blood from her hands onto her, ap onto her apron. It was a little crude, yes, but it worked better than she expected. Outside, the father stared into the sky, while the daughter couldn't look away from the driveway mess. Her head hurt from crying her heart out. It's going to rain soon. It'll wash everything away as if nothing happened. Hmm. Are we really not going to do anything? Yeah, uh, uh, I'll think of something. Daddy is tougher than you think. For now, humor your mother by going along with it. I'll be hosing down the driveway. <laughs> I'm scared. I, I hate this. The father reassuringly patted her on the shoulder. Though he was a man of few words, the father did love his wife, but most importantly, <laughs> he loved his image, oh what a dick. <laughs> he didn't want his family to be branded as miscreants, they had just committed ve <laughs> vecular manslaughter. There had to be a way of disposing of the body, so the dad basically ran over the son by accident. He must have been- oh, he was drawing, that's what it was. He was drawing on the driveway and the dad ran him over and they're trying to like put a head on- uh, a pumpkin on his head. Oh my god. 
dinner is ready, you two. Please come inside. The, the, the mum is crazy. Oh my god! <laughs> Fuck! The, the two were greeted by the son, who was sitting in Grandpa's old wheelchair. What a coincidence. The most bizarre sight, however, was a pumpkin in place of a human head. Its face... It's a good thing it's Halloween that this happened, isn't it? Its face carved into a welcoming grin. One could still see the remains... Remnants, sorry. Of the original crushed head beneath the holes. Within the holes. Oh my god! See? Look! The head! It just looks like him! That's a, quite an insult, isn't it? <laughs> when you were alive and you had a normal human head, you had a pumpkin head. Oh my god. He said he likes his chair, but he, he wishes it wasn't so squeaky. Dear, could you do me a favour and purchase some oil tomorrow? Uh, uh, of course. Well, everyone, don't just stand there catching flies. <laughs> Let us wash our hands and begin the dinner prayer so we can eat. <laughs> oh, oh, she's not happy with the door. She's not. She doesn't like the fact she's got a human head. She must be look like her brother, so they're twins. There was little talk at the table. What was there to say anyway? Despite the gloomy atmosphere, the mother was unusually lively. Here comes the airplane! That's a crashing airplane. <laughs> she was spoon feeding him. The daughter grimaced at her shoving mashed potatoes into the son's mouth. Oh, mashed potatoes are tasty. The girl looked at the father for guidance, but he did not return her gaze, too busy thinking of his image. I think his tie's on quite tight right here. The daughter focused her attention back to the food on her plate. It smelled good, but the meat resembled an awful lot like her brother's head. She dry heaved. <gasps> <laughs> After silently washing the dishes with her mother, the daughter headed straight to bed. She had no energy left in her. Uh oh. <laughs> it's, it's rude leaving your brother at the table, you know. He, he's, he's going to sleep with me? Of course! Why wouldn't he? You two have always shared the bedroom. Uh, <laughs> uh, why, why is he so hard to move? His joints are all locked up. I swear he was much more relaxed this afternoon. <laughs> Fucking dead woman! Says Rigor Morris! <laughs> Using all of her strength, she, the grumbling mother laid the son in his bed. There we go. Ah, oh, now she's happy. <laughs> she first tucked in the son, then the daughter, making sure to keep, kiss each one of their foreheads. Sweet dreams, you two! Mm -hmm. I think the mum's gonna kill the dad in the end because he's too he's too um, concerned about the image and she's just gonna strangle him with these pearls wrapped around her neck. Uh, good good night, mum. With the flick of the switch, the room fell into darkness. Even with the daughter's back turned, she knew those carved eyes were boring into her. Oh, day one. Oh shit! How long is this gonna be? Fuck. Have a good day at work. <laughs> remember what I've told you. Haha, <laughs> that's kind of what my dad would say all the time. Remember what I've told you, or what I told you, or whatever. That's what he'd say all the time. Dear? That is final. Wake up, it's time for school. Her brother was still laying in bed. Of course he was, he's dead. So it wasn't a nightmare after all. As per usual, the mother tied the daughter's bow blue, her favourite colour. There we go, little bow in her hair. Your brother needs to stay at home for a while so um, he can recover from his injuries. Yes, that's a good excuse. Listen, whatever you do, don't tell anyone 
What happened yesterday? It'll be our family's little secret. Do you understand? Uh, oh, okay. Ah, good. I'm glad you're so well behaved. Mommy and Daddy are trying their best to spite our um, predicament. The girl shuffled off towards the skill bus, completely bewildered at the mother's nonchalant attitude. After waving the daughter goodbye, the older woman returned to the house. Hmm. Only- Oh, fuck. <laughs> Only the mother and son remained. Thankfully, his body had loosened up again, so it was easier to carry him out of the bed and into the wheelchair. Oh, maybe it's certain. Maybe it goes like Rigor Mortis and then they start decomposing. I don't have a clue. I'm like, I would not be around dead bodies if I can know that. But I th maybe that's what's happening. I don't get so full of yourself, dear. You still have to study at home. Prop that book on your lap. Oh no, it's falling off. <laughs> oh, don't give me that look either. You know, puppy dog eyes are my weakness. And she put puppy dog eyes in his bloody. So, like sockets. Today was typically the day she spent cleaning the entire house. Despite her being a stay-at-home mother, it was a full job taking care of the estate, not to mention her family. Christ, they live in a giant ass house. She pulled out the vacuum cleaner. Several hours of busy work would be good to take her mind off of yesterday's events. Oh, that's the hoover on. Oh, um, are you thirsty? Would you like me to bring you a beverage? I don't know. I feel like they're the type to say beverage and not drink. You're not? Oh, that's fine. If you need anything, dear, just call for me and I'll be there in a jiffy. Anyway, back to my cleaning. It was a lovely day today and her son could use some fresh air. Oh my god, what if it's really sunny and he starts fucking decomposing and melting? The mother pushed him out to the ver veranda behind the house. It faced the family's pumpkin patch, so no, nos so no nosy neighbours could see him. Humming, the mother entered a comfortable cleaning rhythm, letting all worries slip away. Mm -hmm, dust, 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 dust. Uh oh, the sky suddenly opened up. The mother was glad for the sudden rain. The pumpkin patch desperately needed it. Oh my god, her son's gonna grow up. He's gonna, like, the rain's gonna make him grow into a beautiful plant. More so than he is. Wait, her son was still outside. <gasps> there we go. The mother dragged him inside and threw several towels on him. She pressed against them, drying him as fast as she could. What a fool she was. Taking him outside really was a bad idea. She promised herself she wouldn't slip up like that again. Oh dear, oh dear, your clothes are soaking wet. I, I can't have you catching a cold. I'm going to have to change them, if that's all right with you. Dinner was again silent. Usually the daughter was the chattiest, bragging forever about what she had learned in school or in her books that day. Now she was poking her stew. It takes more muscles to frown, dear, than it does to smile. The daughter refused to respond, huffing in annoyance. <sighs> the mother turned her attention to her husband. Ah, you prick! Your son and I had a great time together. He was very quiet, more than usual, but did complete his required reading. I read to him. I considered that great progress. Uh, I'm heading to the bar. Uh, dear? But we haven't finished yet. Gets a knife <laughs> under the table. <laughs> I'll be back. <laughs> Goodness, what has gotten into everyone? Everyone's insane but me. <laughs> After dinner and its cleanup ended, the mother and daughter went their separate ways. The mother fell fast asleep, but in the daughter's bedroom, the girl was looking for any sign of life in her brother. Oh shit, that's creepy as shit. 
pale skin, dried blood around his neck, and a burgundy discoloration in the arms and hands. It just wasn't human. She reached out for his arm and it fell off. Touching her brother was a familiar occurrence. Play fighting, sharing food, she interacted with him as any sibling would. Even if the two had spent hours in snow, she had never touched a person so cold before. The daughter shrunk back. <gasps> she lacked the heart to continue calling him her brother. The figure tucked gently into bed was an it. Without a word, she pulled the covers over the body. They do. It's school time! Please get dressed! When the daughter awoke, she found the body back to leering at her. The blanket must have slipped off during the night, uncovering the head once more. A fly landed on the pumpkin. Oh, the police are calling. Hello? Who is this? Yes, I am the mother. Yes, ma'am. I assure you everything is fine with my son. He is been feeling a little under the weather lately. Thank you, goodbye. Bitch. <laughs> the teacher on the phone sounded incredibly displeased. Timeless, uh, so, uh, timelessness and attendance had always been one of the family's virtues, so the mother was quite embarrassed. They're really obsessed with their image in this. In addition, the mother felt guilty for not informing the teacher about her son's absence ahead of time, but her husband kept instructing her not to speak about her son's accident. They could just say that his son's like been ill, you know, he's got the flu or something like that. The father did not return that night. Oh, he found a hooker. To help alleviate the awkwardness, the mother attempted some small talk. <clears throat> so, how was your day today? Learn anything fun? Uh, kind, kind of? Oh, well, was dinner to your liking? You need to eat your vegetables to grow big and strong like your brother and turn into one. <laughs> I, I guess. Your brother was telling me a funny story today about how you both accidentally broke a face by playing tag. <laughs> the priceless face that your grandma passed down to me, but not as oh, as all right, as fine. Can't be replaced, of course, but you know, you were so horrified because it's gonna kill you. You'd run out of the house and climb the tree to hide. <laughs> oh, he tried to save you by climbing the tree, but ended up getting stuck there too. <laughs> I like you, my I like my son more than you, you know. Anyway, you two must have been up there for an hour by the time your father and I came home from the grocery store. <laughs> oh, I swear, you kids are always up to mischief whenever your parents are out of the house. <laughs> What's creepy is the fact that she wouldn't have known about that at all. So maybe the son is alive. The mother chuckled and spoon-fed some more broccoli to the son. Oh my god, since he's uh, actually a plant now, half plant, he's technically a cannibal from eating broccoli, his own species, vegetables. The house was starting to smell. It was musty, like meat starting to spoil. The daughter knew exactly what was causing that odour and it made her stomach churn. Yeah, I have to say, like, meat going bad is like the worst smell ever. After dinner, we can put on the radio. The Lone Ranger might be on. You like cowboys, don't you? You like hot dogs, don't you? <laughs> no, not not really. Um, I, I think I'm gonna head to bed, Mum. Oh, fine, 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 fine. Your brother and I will enjoy the program without you, Miss Grumpy Pants. The dad did not return. The mother's first task of the day after sending the daughter and her husband off was to tend to her son. She hadn't noticed it before, but certain areas of the child's skin were discoloured. It had the same green and blue hues of a bruise, but the eerie marbling patterns were nothing like she had seen before. 
At least it was faint. Where are you playing with markers? Pulling out a sponge, she washed the spots, but it refused to scrub off. She retrieves her makeup kit to cover up the blemishes. Oh, this woman. Oh my god. You know, I do actually feel bad for her because she's obviously just so in denial and things like that from the grief of losing her son. She knows deep, 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 deep down that he has died, but she can't come to terms with that reality. And so she's just living in the fact that I put a pumpkin on his head and everything's alright, you know? Tomorrow, she would look for a stronger cleaner for his skin. Bleach. Bleach is probably the only thing. Sweetheart, could you pass the salt to your brother? He looks like he needs some. The daughter hesitated. But he's... Oh, oh, okay. I appreciate you being so well behaved since your brother's injury. It makes mommy's job just a little easier. Don't worry, he'll be back to running around with you in no time. Again, the father did not return for dinner. The daughter was beginning to think that he had run away for good. She did not blame him, but why can't he take her with him? Yeah. Oh, that would be the dad. As the women were cleaning up, the door flung open. It was father. There he is. Oh, he's all like red in the face. The girl's nose crinkled at the heavy liquor smell coming from him. He has been drinking for like two days straight. He must have the hangover of the fucking century. Uh, home heading to bed. No dinner needed. It took you long enough. I'm not happy. Our son needs you right now. Uh, uh, I don't want to hear your nagging woman. The daughter sprinted to her room before she became caught in the crossfire. She could already hear the screaming in the parents' bedroom, knowing her mother this could take hours. Oh my god, now this is starting to like all rot away. Like the several days before, the siblings found themselves staring at each other in bed. It was becoming tough to look at him. The foulness of his scent made her eyes burn like mouldy salami. She failed to suppress a tremble a trem tremble, as she noticed the white fuzz growing in the vegetable's eye. Ugh. She felt nothing but sympathy for the corpse. He deserved a proper burial, like Grandpa, not keeping around in this desecrated state. Agreed. Brother, are you, are you in heaven? Are you at peace right now? Oh, day five. The entire family was keeping to themselves in the living room. The father was reading a newspaper, the daughter playing with jacks, the son sitting silently in the corner, and the mother frantically running around spraying as much bug spray as she could. Oh, she is not, not accepting this. Ugh, ugh, these are fly, there are flies everywhere. Ugh, I'm so sick of their buzzing. I'm worried that... All of the noise bothering our son. He needs as much sleep as possible to recover. Dear, do you think something went bad in the pantry? If you help me move some boxes, I can clean it out today. Ugh. Dear, are you listening? The father threw his newspaper on the floor. I'm tired of playing pretend. You're taking this too far. What do you mean? As in, I'm, I'm disposing of this body properly. I'm digging his grave and you will not stop me. Without hesitation, he left the room and returned with a shovel. He grabbed the wheelchair. Oh, she is gonna bitch slap his ass and she's gonna stab him in the heart with a knife. The mother also latched onto it, pulling it to her side with all her might. Oh, give it back to me! Left and right, the bloated body was jostled between the parents, almost ready to topple over out of its seat. No, leave him alone! You can't keep him like this! Yes, I can! He's our son! Stop scaring him! For heaven's sake, he's green and smells like sewage. Does that sound normal to you? 
the wife should always listen to the husband. Not always, but don't be foolish. Once he is buried in the pumpkin patch, we shall never speak of this again. What a way to go. You get killed, then you become a pumpkin, and then the only way to get buried is in the pumpkin patch. You were always destined <laughs> always destined to be a pumpkin. A couple inches to the right, and that china glass would have blinded him. Don't you dare take him away from me! Her outburst was completely uncharacteristic to the father and daughter, and it shot them. Who or what had possessed the mother? I'm actually going to change her voice to make it sound demonic as well. Please. We can get some help. You're being hysterical. The mother opened a nearby drawer and grabbed a large knife. She was a good cook and knew her cutlery well. <laughs> And that's what she knows her weapons do. The weapon, uh, sorry, the woman looked terrified, shakingly holding that knife, but wholly prepared to strike in defence. I will die before ever letting my children get in harm's way. You are a danger to us. I'll do it. I'm not afraid to do it. The father dropped the shovel, backing slowly away until he was trapped against a wall. Unfortunately for him, the mother closed the distance between the two. That's right. You were the one who ran him over in the first place. So don't you dare lay another finger on his head. Murderer! Crazy ass woman. I've been following your every order, but look where that's gotten us. For the sake of our children, I think it's time you started listening to me. We're going to continue taking care of our son because he had a nasty accident and needs our help. Do you understand? Uh, uh, uh. The wife raised the knife at his face. Oh, I said, do you understand? Yes, yes, uh, I understand. D don't hurt me. And then he peed himself. <laughs> Good. Now, we're going to have ourselves a little nice dinner. Any objections? The room stayed silent. Mother's demeanor became gentler, but she continued to grip that knife as if her life depended on it. Ah, <sighs> I'm glad. Sweetheart, please follow Mommy and help her out. We're returning your brother to the bedroom. Total dis- like total, total change of personality. I think things are a little too loud for him around here. You have been so inconsiderate, you little shit. Oh shit, day seven. <coughs> Happy birthday! <laughs> unwrap it! Unwrap it already! What? Wow, a bike! Thank you! Sure thing, sport. <laughs> How about you break it in after the party? Oh, yes please! This is the best day ever! Can I ride it too? No way! You still need training wheels! Mom, he's being mean. Don't get too rowdy. You still have to unwrap the last of your presents. Who else wants another slice of cake? Me! What the shit? So the son was actually alive the whole time or what? Oh. Are, are you mad at Mommy and Daddy for hurting you? Ah. Thank goodness. I feel so relieved. I always tell your daddy to be more careful when he's driving. 
but he never listens. The mother picked out another maggot and tossed it into a bin. It was starting to overflow, but at least she was making progress removing the squirming creatures. I know, it feels much better, doesn't it? She was a patient woman whose healing process shouldn't take much longer. Oh my god. I was a little late today waking you up. Please get dressed as soon as possible. Bottle after bottle, the mother used her aerosol freshener to help air out the room. Thwack! With her other hand, she squashed a scuttling beetle. By now, she was certain that something went bad in the pantry, for there had been such a large bug infestation. As much as she wasn't looking forward to it, she may have to clean out the entire, clean out the entire pantry. <laughs> oh! She smacked a fly who was resting on top of her son's head. Oh my! I'm sorry for using the fly swatter on you! Did that hurt? While the mother was hard at work cleaning the house, the daughter nowadays avoided going inside as much as possible. Every day, when she came home, her brother's body would be happily greeting her. She just couldn't handle the rotting sights and smells anymore. The smell of his exudation was overpowering. Green and brown juices dripped from his head and soaked his clothes. It wasn't rotten meat or spoiled milk anymore. It was death. No kids wanted to be near her either. In the corner of her eye, she could see them gag and hold their noses as if she was the deceased one herself. What if it was? What if there's like a, a plot twist and she is also deceased? That'd be so weird. Or the whole family. Hmm, are you sure you don't want to stay with me a little longer? Oh, oh, is this hooker? I, I, I can't. I, I have to get back home to my crazy-ass wife. But you've been looking so stressed recently. Is everything okay at home? The father let out a deep sigh. <sighs> Not particularly. Oh dear. Oh dear indeed. I haven't been treated the best recently. Oh, my wife has been so demanding, screaming at me for the slight, the littlest things. She is strutting around like she wears a pants around the house now. I can't get any peace and quiet in my own home. I, I need to show her who's boss. She can't push me around like this. I'm a man for God's sake. I wish you luck. You always keep crawling back to me you lick your wounds. What have you been doing? <laughs> Where have you been? It is rather late. Work. Hmm. Our son is asking about you today because you failed to show up for supper again. You're worrying him sick. Ugh, every single day you talk about that blasted son. I don't like how you... I had the knife in my pie. <laughs> I have the knife in my dress, you asshole. You do. You do your job and make the money. I take care of the house and the kids. Why is it so hard for you to understand, yet you call me foolish? Oh, he's all embarrassed. He was humiliated from how quickly she shut him down. At least she couldn't di di dictate his actions outside of the home. He berated himself for his cowardness. Day 14. Two weeks of rotted flesh! Darling, I'm sorry that dinner was a little rushed. Taking care of your brother was consuming most of my day today. It was worse than rushed. More like she threw random ingredients, inedible or not, into a pot. This past week, it seemed that most of our meals were ending in, his sim in a similar fate. The daughter poked a semi-charred apple with her fork. <laughs> There was a maggot, a maggot living in her food. Ew. Oh my, what if I told you about not washing your hands before you eat? You need to wash them more frequently. Were you playing outside again? Stop it. Stop it already. 
How can you two continue pretending everything is normal? Oh my god, has he got like five o'clock shadow shit going on? <laughs> the mum is not happy. Dear, tell her everything is normal. The father looked like he was in a trance, rhythmically chewing his food without a care in the world. Listen to your mother more. She is correct. <laughs> it's not true. Why do you insist on talking back, you little shit? You are a child. You don't understand anything. Treat your parents with some respect. The mother began to spoon feed the body again. The spoon's contents also heartily containing maggots. A milk white maggot slipped from the softening pumpkin heads and landed onto the spoon, oblivious to the mother. Mmm, yummy, isn't it? Oh god, she was going to retch. I'm going to my room. As you should. No supper for the rest of the evening. The daughter was forced to cart the body back into their bedroom, making sure to avoid touching his slimy body as little as possible. His abdomen, distended beyond belief, was straining to rip through his clothes. The gorging insects were taking delight in how he was a balloon ready to pop. Who knew what putrid horrors were trapped inside him? The girl fell to her knees, weeping. Mother kept saying everything was fine, but of course it wasn't. What could, what wouldn't she give to return to normalcy? Whatever she did, she do to deserve this torture. If, if only she and her brother hadn't been roughhousing when the car came. When she looked up, the body was now facing away from her, giving her some semblance of privacy during her grief. Or was he always facing that way? She couldn't remember. Thank you. Of course, there would be no response, yet she still felt the urge to say something. I miss you, brother. I miss you so much. Imagine if you turn around and it's like, I miss you too. School? Now. Oh, fuck. Ah! Another day, another garbage bag full of empty bug spray. The mother dabbed away any leakage from the son's body alongside some flaky adipores. I think it says. I'm not sure. It was too much of a mess moving him in and out of the wheelchair anymore. Too much of a mess moving him in and out of the wheelchair anymore. Not to mention running, ruining her upholstery. So she might as well clean him where he sat. You need to take care of yourself more. The last time. Oh, sorry. You need to take care of yourself more. The last time I sponge bathed you was when you were a wee baby. Not to say you're not still mommy's little baby. She was frustrated with how many rags it took to maintain her son's cleanliness. He was slowly making his way through her favourite dish rags. The pelican patterned one she was using was soaked with murky browns and greens. Her poor pumpkin seemed to be covered in greasy black substance. It wasn't his job to clean the stove top. The mother dabbed harder against his arm, accidentally scraping off a small section of skin. She groaned when more fluid oozed from the spot. Eww. Your sister has been refusing to help with the laundry. Can you believe it? I wish she was as well behaved as you. No one else wants to spend time with dear old mom. That's why you've always been Mommy's favourite. <gasps> oh, give me a second, I'll be right back. Hello? Yes, this is the mother. What? My daughter said that? Uh, about that. I think a raccoon died in the walls. We're going to have get it looked at. Hmm? Yes? Yes? Oh, she's just overreacting. Children have such vivid imaginations. Her fish clenched. That girl! That little shit! <laughs> Fick me up! <laughs> because the school bus had long since left, the mother had to drive to school to pick her up. They drove back in silence with the daughter awkwardly fidgeting. 
The mother looked like she was about to blow a gasket. Oh god, the mother is angry. Okay, <clears throat> explain yourself. Your teacher said that you were insistent on not returning home because there was a corpse in our house. Do you know how embarrassed I was? But, but it's true. There are insects crawling all over him and the house. I, I don't know how much more I can take. I feel so sick. The mother glanced at the body. Hmm. What's that, darling? She's being quite rude, isn't she? Yes, I agree with you. We should throw her in the well. Mom, he's dead. He will never respond. When will you do something about it? It's awful living here. What a horrible thing to say about your brother. I thought I raised you better than that. Everything has gone downhill since he died. You don't do my hair bow anymore. I didn't even notice. Whoops. <laughs> the food is rotten. Daddy barely ever comes home. And I can't stand all this smell. I know you're still grieving. But when will you ever get it through your sick head? Oh shit. Bitch slapped her ass. <laughs> The mother's eyes widened at the reddening of her hand and her weeping daughter on the floor. The woman had spanked both her children for misbehaving before, but she had never stricken their faces. You... you hit me! Oh, sweetie, I didn't mean it. I don't know what came hold of me. You know I'm so stressed from taking care of your brother. I don't know who you are anymore, but you're not my mom. I hate you. Darling. No, you can't hide this anymore. I'm telling the police about you and my brother. She sprinted to the phone, but the mother grabs her by the hair. Pain seared for the girl's body. <gasps> She's going to totally kill the whole family. Oh my god. You insolent child. After everything I've done for you. It hurts, mother. It hurts. I'm gonna rip my scalp off. A pubescent girl had no physical power over a fully grown woman. The daughter was dragged across the wood floor, using all of her strength to attempt to release herself. Oh my god. When the mother reached the children's bedroom, she threw the girl inside the door, the door and locked. I really don't like the dad. The dad could literally take the young girl and phone the police and leave. Like, he's so selfish, he just, he's just thinking of his penis. What an asshole. Let me out! I'm begging you! Oh, oh, mommy is so tired. The poor, wretched girl banged and banged again on the door to no avail. The mother wasn't even listening to her. And I'm sure you're tired of the arguing as well. Daddy disagreed for a while, but he eventually learned that mommy always knows best. All we have to do is wait a little bit longer until your brother heals up. You believe mommy, don't you? I need to tell your father about this. He will not be pleased. No, no, I, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. If you were truly sorry, you would have been a better sister. You can be that now. Yeah? Oh, this is nuts. That night, the daughter had a nightmare. Maggots covered every square inch of her body twisting and writhing to find any way to burrow deeper inside. She would have screamed if her mouth wasn't equally stuffed with maggots. Ugh, what an awful dream. The white worm slithered across the remains of her tongue, bashing against the walls of her pumpkin head, trying to escape. She could feel their tiny mouths eating away at her, bite by bite. 
Hello there, my sweet baby boy. I was just checking up on you. Did I disturb your sleep? No, she wasn't her brother. Leave her alone. You haven't fallen asleep yet? Are you having trouble? I can read you a bedtime story if you would like. Which one do you want to hear? If I remember correctly, the ugly duckling was your favourite. Perfect story. <laughs> she sat there next to the daughter, unaware of the slimy, squirming creatures crawling their way into the hem of her dress. Buzzing blowflies danced above the two. And she began to read. The air was suffocating. Good night. May you have sweet dreams. She kissed the pumpkin. Dark slime clung to her lips from her sweet goodnight smooch. The room fell into darkness, leaving the daughter alone, coughing and gagging into the night. Oh Christ, 20 days. It must be a whole month or something. Yes, ma'am. My daughter's at home too. The kids' measles have gotten pretty bad, but they should be returning to school any day now. Yes, of course. I've been homeschooling them in the meantime. What do you think I've been doing this entire time? My babies will be back when they're ready. Not a day sooner. You can stop calling now. Bitch. <laughs> the mother was exhausted from the incest phone, incessant phone calls. Just yesterday, the electric company had threatened to shut down the power if the bills weren't paid, but she knew she had paid them. The son's skin looked even worse today, concerningly worse. His skin was soaked with a soaked paper towel, tearing just as easily. The mother brought out more of her makeup kit, ready to powder all of the purification. Though unlike her previous attempts, her son's skin refused to obey. Oh, like a silk glove, the skin slipped off, landing silently onto the ground. The ease of such a feat shot her. Yuck, yuck, yuck. Then more, and more, and more, until it was resembling some bloated lizard emerging from his molt. With each opening, a drip of black stew-like goo kept trickling down his limbs. Ugh. No! 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 Don't, don't do this! Don't do this, please! She pressed her hands against him to hamper any further slothing. Retaliation. A gaseous of thick fluid spurt from his torso, accompanied by air too foul to describe. Ah! Ugh. Finally, the stream of bodily dislequest came to rest. The child in front of her was partially deflated, sagging further into his soaked seat. This wasn't good. Why wouldn't her husband take their child to the hospital? The mother was damn near ready to herself, but she knew the jostling from the trip would make things worse. Even the slightest touch of her hands was not safe anymore. Tears welled in her eyes. What more could she do? On the contrary, the son's face was twisted into some re relieved grin. The tired woman looked down. Her dress's hem was dyed in an assortment of dark fluid. Touching her dress only further coated her hands in the mucus. After the mother spent the rest of the day cleaning the mess, she bathed and went to bed. Oh my god. Anytime the daughter's door was unlocked, it was to slip in food. The timing was irregular, making it difficult to calculate when she should escape. She could hardly eat the food anyway. Not one meal passed without a wriggling maggot, a wiggling maggot hiding inside. Being trapped in this festering room made her entire body itch. She brushed off a hungry fly crawling on her arm. Their usual food source had been relocated to the living, living room for several days now, but they were more than happy to bother her. The daughter remembered Job, a figure from the Bible. Despite all the suffering and adversity he was given, he never gave up hope and was rewarded in the end. A Job, not Job. <laughs> she could make it through this too. One power the daughter had over her mother was retaining her wits. Oh God! <laughs> the police are here, but why? The mother glanced at the rooms behind her. Hide him, quick, and make sure the police don't hear the children. We don't have any. Good afternoon, officers. What business do you have here? Excuse me, ma'am. We were called here today because of a smell complaint. One of your neighbours isn't happy. 
Oh yes, sirs, everything is all right. We've been having all sorts of pest problems, and we've been doing everything we can to clean them out. Insects in the pantry, raccoons in the walls, it's all a living nightmare. Oh, phew, I sure can smell it. Do you have a stinky cheese factory hidden in there? The three awkwardly chuckled. The caller also mentioned that your son hasn't been seen in a while. Uh, yes, it is a case of the measles. I'm afraid he hasn't been improving as quickly as I'd hoped. I've been so weary. Everything's been piling up. My husband keeps saying he doesn't have any time to help. He's always working. The mother wiped her eyes as the policemen lowered their hats to their chests. Oh, I'm so sorry, ma'am. We won't bother you anymore. Our best wishes for you and your son getting better. Oh, thank you. You're too kind. I'll be sure to tell him. Mm -hmm. The daughter's mouth was gagged with an old sock behind her. Her father was tying her arms with rope. Her father is an idiot and could quite just grab the daughter and run. The man had little idea how to do it and was trying to barbarically force the limbs into position that they shouldn't go. Your mother cares about us, you know that, don't you? You can see how much she loves your brother. She'll come round and then we can go back to being a family. Why did her father keep listening to that monster? The daughter let out a muffled wail. <coughs> Finally, the man turned to stare at her. Instead of a cold glare, he looked pain from heartbreak. He placed what might have been a loving hand on her shoulder, but he seemed to have lost its health. Yes, that's it. She was his child, remember? Surely he'd realise what he was doing to her. Go, uh, go. Any trace of empathy vanished when he heard the returning high heels of mother. Clip, clop, clip, clop, clip, clop. What took you so long? Come with me to the entrance. Her arms were bright red from struggling against the rope. No, don't leave me. Or don't leave her, sorry. On the opposite side of the room, the son's untied body was mocking her. A large section of hand, ligament and muscle dribbled down into the wheelchair seat. Eventually, the police drove away. The parents did not return to unbind her. Was it because they forgot or did they not, or did they know she would attempt to escape again? Day fucking 25! <sighs> Both the father and mother were staring at the black limb on the floor. It was soft and delicate, like wet tissue paper. Likewise, the child was rapidly falling apart, his mushy pumpkin head barely att attaching to the neck. It's going to go pff, like that. I, I thought after receiving his new head, he would be recovering, but every day he gets worse and worse. What's wrong? What should we do? Mm. That's it. What if we place the body? His body wasn't compatible with the head, so... We should, we should find a new body. That's it. The neighbor's son. They're the same age. Oh my God. Bring the child here tonight and don't keep me waiting. Our son needs his body more than that th their brat does. Oh my Christ. Wow, now she's going to cause more murder. The door was awoke by the muffled sounds of struggling and whimpering. What was going on? Oh my god, they actually stole the child. Holy shit. The child screaming in the basement answered her question. Would she be next? The daughter did the only thing she could think of. No, don't pray. Smash that window with that lamp right here and then run. At least tr attempt. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. Footsteps are closer to her bedroom. Oh, Holy Mother, Mother of God, pray, pray for us sinners. Your mother wants to see you. No! No! Oh, shit! There was an uninvited person in the basement, and he was dead. He was fresh, and the pumpkin on his head was even fresher. Her parents really did kill someone. Oh, my God fucking god. In the corner, her brother's body was callously cast aside. Oh shit. Look, darling. Look. Your brother is all better now. 
Aren't you happy? We don't have to worry anymore. The mother stepped towards his daughter, completely drenched in blood. The daughter wanted to vomit, but the father held her still, unable to run away from her mechanical ma ma matriarch. matriarch. Ah, I'm so glad you agree. Things will finally go back to normal. Don't forget, you have school tomorrow, so you can take your brother with you. She was prancing around the wheelchair beyond proud of her net newest work. The daughter knew that within a month the body would finish rotting and all the torment would begin anew. While the mother spoke, the new corpse was already turning pale. I was so busy preparing for today that I completely forgot about dinner. It may be the middle of the night, but how about we have ourselves a celebratory, celebratory meal fit for a whole family? <gasps> the, the, the police? And this soon? You absolutely good for nothing husband! I should have done it myself. The father simply bowed his head. You've always been so oafish, and thanks to you, you've now ruined it for all of us. Do not let them down here, or they'll take our son away from us. The parents were distracted, now was her chance. As hard as she could, the daughter bit down her father's hand, drawing deep blood. He jumped back as the girl burst from his arms and beelined up the stairs. You better rethink that right now! Oh, the mother had her butcher knife around the other child's neck. Oh, fuck it, it's just they dead anyway. If you leave us, I'll kill him. You wouldn't want to be responsible for your brother's death again, would you? That would make mommy very sad. I'm not afraid to do it. Don't take another step. For a split second, the daughter almost pitied her mother. Throughout this entire month, the mother kept denying and making excuses completely delusional that nothing was wrong with her other, with her other child. Even now, she was treating this decapitated corpse like a hostage of value. Huh? Was it, darling? You want me to kill her instead? That does make sense. I've always loved you more anyway. Haha, <laughs> I called it. The older woman faced her daughter, her knife already poised for attack. She... she wasn't kidding. Sweetheart, listen to your mother. Come down these stairs right now. You've already caused her enough trouble. The daughter was so close to escaping, but her legs refused to move. Well, I don't know what that voice can be like, so Gloria! <laughs> her heart was ready to burst out of her chest. She would know that voice anywhere. Haha, <laughs> that's his voice now. Uh, uh, bro brother? In the corner of the room, a figure turned its head. No, his pitiful head to face her. But how? He was supposed to be dead. What the shit? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Everything turned out this way. It wasn't your fault. I don't know. His voice is going to sound like that because he's dead. Gloria, you need to run now. And with those last words, his body collapsed back to the floor, bursting into a blackened sludge. Now he was truly gone. That closure was just what she needed. With no more time to spare, the daughter grit her teeth and she sprinted up the rest of the stairs. Out of the house, she barreled into a policeman's arms. The mother's howling was already far in the distance. Hey, be careful. That's a child. Are you hurt, lassie? What's your name? It had been so long since the last time she touched a warm human being. Her resilience was finally rewarded. Don't worry, young lady. We'll take care of this. You're safe now. <laughs> you, cover the, you cover the seeds with dirt. Sprinkle some water every so often and they'll be ripe for picking in October. 
Wow, that's so cool. Uh, what's the biggest pumpkin you've ever grown? Uh, hard to say. Maybe the size of our, our car? No way, Daddy. You're such a liar. The father chuckled. Ho, ho, ho. <laughs> but I have, I have won a blue ribbon at the state fair before. You should have been seeing the look on your mother's face. Having fun out there before I go insane later. Yeah, Daddy is showing us how to grow crops. Oh, well, dinner's on the table. You free better hurry or get cold. Last one is a raw egg. Wait up. You had a head start. Daddy, why are you running too? Your legs are longer. It's not fair. The mother put out a valiant struggle in staying with her deceased victims, but she was eventually dragged away. Kicking and screaming, ultimately she was institutionalised in a crazy home. The father was charged with kidnapping and shortly afterwards committed suicide in prison. Oh my god. No one would mourn his death. Oh shit. With no family left to claim guardianship over the daughter, she was simply shipped to the nearest orphanage. Oh, that's so sad. For the longest time, this tragedy became the talk of the town. Who could have known that the quiet but kind-hearted family were host to monsters? Wow. It was rather lonesome in the orphanage. No matter how many times the daughter bathed herself, fellow children, fellow children constantly marked by her repugnant smell. She couldn't tell if it was because they were mocking or if the girl could truly never wash away the scent of death from her house. Oh, you poor child. I can't begin to imagine your pain. Don't worry. We'll find a good family to take care of you. At least the nuns were kind enough to ignore her smell. She was able to make friends with one of the older nuns. He was well known throughout the place for her baking skills. Oh, that's kind. I baked a nice pie, pumpkin pie today. Would you like a piece? I would never, ever, ever go near a pumpkin again after, like, if I was this girl. Eek! Show you silly fly. This pie is not for you. I'm sorry, they're such a nuisance. The flies have been unusually bold recently, and I don't know why. If you would like, I can cut another slice of pie for you. Toss it, please. I'm not hungry. Are you sure? I'm begging you. I can't bear to look at it anymore. As you wish, my dear. Oh my god. Well, that was Pumpkin Eater, everyone. That was a crazy insane game. Pretty gross, but I had lots of fun, especially doing all the voices. I hope you enjoyed it too. Um, if you enjoyed that, please feel free to subscribe and leave a comment and give it a thumbs up if you wish. And if you didn't like it, you know, give it a thumbs down. Your choice. <laughs> but I shall catch you all next time. Bye for now.